Hello, dear friend. Thomas Mathen IV here. I'm continuing in a message. Uh, I want to speak about the subject of intimacy with God. It's your ultimate priority in life. It is the ultimate priority. It's the thing that touches every other part of life. And uh, without it, you're just sunk. I want to start by... Uh, I want to start by a definition of intimacy. I did a volume one uh, yesterday. Very, very powerful, deep and heartfelt message. People were uh, pretty amazed, you know, I, I, with it. And I, I certainly was. Uh, the Lord is... <laughs> he passed the spies. Bless you. The Lord is... Uh, is just doing something amazing. I I believe that he's uh, trying to get the the whole church world into like a love fest with him. That's what I've been feeling over the last many days in prayer, uh, a deepness of conviction, you know, people to repent in areas they need to uh, repent about, people to... Um, Take responsibility, be transparent to the, before the Lord and say, God, I want to fix everything that you want to be fixed. I don't want to go on in my life uh, without having the proper thing with you, me and you. You know, at the end of it all, I can say a lot of things on that. Uh, at the end of it all, uh, a, Apostle Bruno, there you are. How are you, my friend? Where are you in the world? You type me a note. You can have all the things in the world and not be intimate with God and lose your soul for eternity. So it's not about, you know, what you get in the material realm, although those things are great to use as tools, you know. But you can uh, also lose out on eternal bliss by not having that intimacy with God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and understanding. So I'm, t I'm entitled, I've entitled this Intimacy with God, the Ultimate Priority. Everything that you need and want actually comes from that. You know? Got some smart water here. I have a little joke on this. If you're ever feeling a bit stupid, get some smart water. I hope it'll help. That's my opening with something funny at a moment, as some preachers do. Intimacy. Here's a definition. It's a noun. In other words, it's a, it's a thing that's supposed to really happen. It says close familiarity or friendship and closeness. The intimacy between people. I, I, I want to talk about between you and God right now. Not just uh, the people thing. Because, you know, the next euphemistic, well, intimacy is also called, another definition is a private cozy atmosphere you also need an atmosphere in the presence of the lord to have anything wonderful going on with you and him and then the euphemistic definition talks about the sensual part of it okay but in the relationship part of it it says some cinnamon some cinnamons <laughs> cinnamon cinnamon in your no sin synonyms i got it that's why N O N Y M S. Syn synonyms. It's a hard word to say. Okay, our, some synonyms are closeness, together. Yes, I got it. Synonyms are closeness, togetherness. I'm sure someone will still say cinnamon no matter how hard they try. In Africa, my friends in Africa call aluminum aluminium. What's up? Ding. Need some smart water. You need to drink some of this. Get rid of your, your plague. Aluminium. How did you even get that by reading the word? It's aluminum. Aluminum. Synonym. Okay? Well, synonym is good for you, but anyway, you need to take some of that too. Closeness, togetherness, affinity. Rapport. Attachment. Familiarity. And confidentiality. What a great thing. Friendliness. Comradeship. 
companionship, amity. I guess it has something to do with amor. Amore, that's the love, you know. Affection, mutual affection, warmth, warm feelings, understanding, etc. I'm going somewhere with this. Hold on, just give me a minute now. Just wait for it. It's coming. I, I'm, I'm building a little platform here from this noun, intimacy, closeness, togetherness, friendship, confidentiality, even that kind of relationship, rapport, companionship, friendliness, comradeship, amity, affection, mutual affection, warmth, warm feelings, understanding the fellow feeling, you know, all of that togetherness. Can I tell you, I have to ask you the question. Do you have that with God? Do you have that with God? Are you and him, are you and him walking on that, you know, on that kind of wavelength together? Are you, um, you know, walking with him in that, in that regard? All right, I want to, I want to do something else here. Now that keeps going off. Every time I do that, I'm going to get it. Just give me a second. Oh, this is good. When you look up the word, there's so many different things about it. Okay. Okay. Um, there's something I wanted to refer to here. I'm trying to find it again. It, it just slipped my... Oh, my God. Here it is. Here it is. Okay, somebody said... And they wrote in the book, and I can tell you what the book is. It's easy to miss the mark in the realm of intimacy when it comes to showing that you care. Queen Sonia, Sonia, bless you, dear. Showing that you care means a lot. Okay, and then uh, some, here, here's something. Receiving gifts, quality time, words of affirmation, and acts of service, even physical touch, but, you know, the Holy Spirit can touch you, and you feel like you got physically touched, you'll feel better than that even. Because the power of God, the presence of God just can melt you, I mean, just make you feel like, wow, this is great, you know. There's nothing better than it. So, part of love being communicated is giving gifts, receiving gifts. Quality time with words of affirmation and acts of service. Now, I, I pray that conviction comes upon people because, you know, you know you're not doing enough yet to make the world a better place to live because you're here. You know that intimacy will produce something, but are you doing enough about it? Let me tell you who, who, who really appreciates intimacy is the child that's born. Oh, this is deep now. The child that gets born by intimacy in the connection of human beings together to produce offspring, they would never happen or be created if there wasn't intimacy between a man and a woman, okay? Man and a woman, you understand that? Not other ways. Man and woman, not different variations. Will produce an offspring and a child that will cause the greatest thing to happen, a new life. I want to share a scripture with you. Isaiah 66, verse 5 through 12 in there. We see a story about uh, a passage, a really profound passage about can a nation be born in a day? Well, yes, it can be born. When Zion travails, she gave forth birth to her children. And the Lord even said, will I cause to come to the point of delivery and not deliver? Will I cause you to come to the point of conception and then delivery and then have you not deliver the child? So the Lord is compassionate. He said, my word is so powerful. I can break the rock into pieces. My word's like a hammer. And he said, I have ordained this Jeremiah 1. Uh, is it verse 5? It says, I've called you as a prophet to, to, to 5 through 10. Jeremiah 1, 5 through 10. is speaking about Jeremiah being called as a prophet. 
He said, you will fulfill everything that I've ordained you to do. There was that intimate connection. There was that new life produced. I'll tell you, until you get connected with the Holy Spirit in this tangible relationship with the things I mentioned, acts of service, kindness, love, affection, gratitude, you know, affirming words, the right words, all of these things. How on earth is God going to come to use you to shake the whole world? I, I thought about this. Uh, he won't, uh, but he'll do it through someone who's intimate with him. You understand? If you think that doesn't come first before conception, before new life, you, 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 I don't know what Bible you've read. I don't know what God you say you know. Uh, you, you know, it's just, it just doesn't work like that. Okay? And, and any of the greats who we call the greats, the giants of the faith, you know, the men, the men and women of faith and power, the Woodworth Edder, Maria Woodworth Edder, the Amy Simple McPherson, the Catherine Coleman, those are three women. The uh, Oral Roberts, the Billy Graham, the Billy Sunday, uh, uh, you know, the Charles Spurgeon and uh, all, all of these guys, the John Wesley, the Wesley brothers and Smith Wigglesworth, Lester Sumrall now in our past generation, Kenneth Hagin. If you think that these men and these women didn't have this intimate glory, realms of prayer and consecration unto the Lord and just moving, you know, oh God, I feel the anointing here. Shut up. Receive the touch of fire from heaven. That's why I'm here to bring it to you. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm doing this. No other reason. No other reason under the sun. I want to see you get the fire like I've got it. I want to see you get the fire like great men and women of old have gotten it. I want to see you get it. I want to see you so saturated with the glory. If you begin to weep in public, don't feel like a fool because it's the Holy Spirit breaking up your heart and your emotions. When he touches you that strong, you, you, you can't contain yourself. People ask the question, why do people fall down? What they call, you know, slain in the spirit, knocked over under the power of God, fall, falling under the power, falling in the spirit. Why, why did, because they can't stand up anymore. Because the presence of God is so uh, uh, amazingly tangible that you just, you know. Now, some people do the CD, the courtesy drop, you know, like you rise and fall, you know, fall, because it's that kind of thing. Now we're going to have the time. We're going to lay, lay hands on people. Everybody's supposed to fall down, you know. No, you don't have to fall down. You could stand up. The main thing is that you get touched by God. But I was, I was saying this yesterday. We had meetings, even uh, daytime services in certain cities, they're day and night. And some people that came from work, they couldn't get back to work in the afternoon. I don't know if they got in trouble or what. But they were on the floor for two hours under the anointing and nobody could pick them up. They picked them up, they fall down again. And it wasn't some sloppy thing. It was very organized, very glorious temple place. The meetings where we had the play, it was glorious. Everything was very nice and organized, beautiful carpet. I mean, if someone wanted to be comfortable on the floor, they were comfortable there. It was beautiful carpet. And they, but they just couldn't get up. And they were like, oh my God, by the time they got up and looked at their watch and staggered out of the place, but God had visited them, you know, to the point where it could bring a total life change. I'm reminded, and I haven't thought of this in years. This is amazing, Holy Spirit. Thank you for this right now. I'm reminded right now, and I have not shared this. I have not shared this. In, uh, this is a long time ago. This is years and years and years ago. I don't want to tell you how many, because, you know, I look younger than I am, really. I always say, you know, how old are you? I don't know. I don't tell people. I say, well, I'm younger than Methuselah. He lived to 969. And I'm a few weeks older than a millennial. They were born from 2000 on, you know, with, I guess they'd be 18, you know, teenagers and going into their 20s or whatever. You know, so I'm a little bit more than them, but less than Methuselah. So somewhere in between. <laughs> but this was a long time ago. I, I had a very important end of year sales quota that I wanted to make in a, in a, in a company. I was, in, I was a broker and I wanted to do that. And then I had the opportunity to travel with a man of God that he asked me to come with him as his armor bearer on a trip where I met giants of the faith and a lot of uh, great divine connections that happened. And guess what? I, God took me full time into his work to be a missionary, revolutionary, reformer around the world 
And it's so far back that 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 company and work I was doing then and that whole thing I was doing is so irrelevant right now in my life. It's beyond irrelevant. It's like non-existent. I haven't thought of this in, in forever. Uh, I mean, a really long time. And I, and I made a decision to how, to how to weigh it out. Do I want God? Because I'm called to serve in the kingdom. I'm called to be his prophet. I know that. Or do I want to stay and say, no, I can't because I have all this other responsibilities in my current job, which even by the next year, I was already going to transition away from. Whew. So those kind of things, you know, when you have those God moments and God can touch you, Always opt for that and choose that more than other things. And that's why a lot of people lose and fail because they're not in the presence of God enough. And I'm, I'm telling you, we need that touch again. You know, I know people are hurting. I know people are in churches that don't have these waves of glory hit. And I'm not talking about this goofy stuff, you know. I, 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 I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of that spooky stuff. I'm not in this, this like, you know, there's like religious people that are anti-everything and anti-prosperity, anti you know, anything that's not, doesn't seem organized. And then there's this other people on the other side that seem very sloppy and very, you know, and, and there's all kinds of weird stuff. People have meetings, you know, and then everybody's laying hands on each other. Whoa, 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 don't touch me. I don't know where you've been. I don't know what you got. You know, I tried to be kind and go to a few of those events and speak in some of those meetings. It's like a free-for-all. Everybody's throwing oil on each other. And people do stupid stuff like saying they're seeing this and that and this and that. It's just, a lot of it's off. And then you don't know the quality of the person either, you know. You, you want good, rich, prosperous, blessed, successful, Holy Ghost filled more than anything, more than how, how much, you know, equity somebody has. You want people that are established and real, full of God, full of life and full of success to lay their blessed hands on you. And you know you're going to receive something from God. And you know the transference is good because the person is already, you know, full of that good thing that God is giving. So where does this all stem from and come from? It comes from intimacy. It comes from that relational merging together. That papa shikaba prekeso. That, oh God, I feel this. That causes a spiritual offspring to happen. You see a child that was born by intimacy. It could have just been a physical thing. Even a child's born. And you could ask a child, like, hey, kid, yo, dude, or girl, hey, baby, uh, little girl, little boy, is it good that you're here? They look at you like you're crazy. Of course it's good. What do you mean is it good? Where, where, what else was I supposed to do? Where else was I supposed to be? Oh, my God. And, you, and, and this is a revelation I'm receiving today. I mean, just here before I got, came on live here, I first heard this from the Lord. The Lord spoke to me and said, tell the people, is it good for intimacy that comes together, that gives birth to something new, gives birth to a new tribe, a new generation, a new group of people, a new uh, thing that, that has life? Is that good? It's very good. Are you kidding? It's, it's splendiferous. It's glorious. It's phantasmagoric, if I could say another word. It is beyond, beyond. It is the best of the best, but no, no intimacy, no power. And the devil wants to keep you from intimacy with God, number one, and he also wants to keep you from having friends. Let me digress on that a little bit, into that a little bit. I just received a prophecy. And another apostolic leader called me on the phone about an hour and a half ago, and... Um, began to prophesy. He's driving on a long trip. He's got a whole uh, a van of, or truck full of uh, camera equipment, t TV equipment. He's going to do interviews in another state, very long drive from where he is. And he decided to drive because he has all his equipment. He couldn't carry it all. So he just says, I like to drive. And he's just driving a very long journey uh, across America. Not the whole country, but, you know, it's a, it's a long drive, a thousand miles or whatever. He's going, and he called me on the way, and he said, the Lord spoke to me, and I had time because I'm away from everyone else. I'm just in the car praying, and I have this time, and I thought, he said, well, I don't know if I can reach the prophet because I don't know if he'll answer if he's busy, he's in meetings, he's doing something. Sure enough, when I was on another uh, uh, international chat, 
and all of a sudden I saw the other uh, pop-up box on my, I have, a, I have good phones, obviously. Pop-up box and said his name. I said, oh, I clicked answer. So I puts the other thing on hold or whatever and pauses the other thing and then there he is. And he starts prophesying about connection with great strong people. And he talked about the sword and he talked about tribes and he talked about people and he talked about connections. And he says, where you are, God wants you to be where you are in the different places because you're, you're getting people and people that won't, uh, you know, be unloyal or unfaithful in any way to you because they're real. And God is surrounding you with these people. And he's also giving you your armor bearers and your teams and your people. But these other people that are kingdom people, they're going to be like, it's like a big circle. And it's very, very beneficial for you. And I thought, wow, that's powerful. That's, that's actually happening. You know, I mean, that's, this is the word of the Lord. And he's, he's one of them. He's one of them. Another apostolic leader. And there are several others. And we, we need that synergy of connection and relationship, the intimacy with each other. Okay, to produce with each other, to produce the spiritual offspring and the thing that God wants produced. Hey, Dr. J, boing, shebang. I've been looking at your uh, yellow Corvette and stuff in your videos. I'm going to watch them when you put them out. I'm very excited to see. I love you, man. I was thinking about you today. I really was. I was thinking about you yesterday and today, like through the course of the day, many times. Look forward to talking. I don't know where you are on the planet. I know you're traveling somewhere out there. When you're back, please give me a holler. We'd love to. We'd love to do some sushi again. That would be phenomenal, a phenomenal privilege for me. And if this week is possible, because after that I get kind of busy, my schedule is really wild, uh, really. And But this week is good, so I hope we can. At least for an hour. Anyway, so uh, the, the Lord is, uh, is really uh, amazed at the level of insolence, arrogance, lackadaisicalness, you know, of people that they don't take this thing seriously again to... Oh, good, good. So they don't take these things, you know, seriously enough. If God Almighty calls you for a mission, isn't that more important than Jeff Bezos or, or Bill Gates? Come on now, i got to preach here. And, and let's get this thing straight, because we look at the material, how many billions this one made. Oh, if I can have lunch with him and, ha you know, pay him thousands of dollars to have lunch with Warren Buffett, you'll learn a lot. You better go with your list of questions, because he's a sharp cat. You know, he's not a joker, and he values time, and you go sit there and look at him, and you spend 10 minutes, like, chit-chatting. He's going to be like, hey, are you serious about why you got to meet with me? You better have your stuff ready. Now, now i got to say something about questions. Questions are always the, uh, the thing that provokes solutions. A solution is always a servant to a question, but a question not asked will not get a solution. So you need to ask a lot of questions. But, but, I mean, but I'm saying, Almighty God has called us. Do we not take that as beyond sacred? And I feel bad. I just feel tears. I, I tell you, I feel tears in my eyes. I feel, I feel sad. I feel compassion. I feel, you know, I want to pray. I want to break and bring people into deliverance that got bewitched by any problem they've had in their life. Any oppression they've had, any damage that was done to them through attacks and situations and adversities. You know the thing they call PSD, P, PTSD, the post-traumatic uh, syndrome, stress disorder. Post-traumatic post stress disorder, PTSD. It means you got damage in your soul and your emotions and your mind by horrific things that happened and it like messed you up. You couldn't think straight. You couldn't see clearly. A friend of mine, another prophetic warrior from South Africa, from Cape Town, South Africa, dear, dear, dear servant of the Lord. We were just together in a great conference. We were prophesying to each other, and the words that they prophesied to me, one person on my team has already typed them out. In fact, they did it instantly within a few hours. And, uh, and, just, and I got to read all these things that the Lord said through them. And, and they were posting something about the spirit of 
Python. Now, I don't get much into that. If you know me, I'm a real straight shooter. I'm an intellectual. I'm a first world man. I'll teach on the laws of success and, and excellence and all these things and the prophetic things God's saying to the nations. And I don't go deep into all these other applications. You know, some stuff is just too spooky for me. I, I, I understand it, but I don't know if I like a lot of it. But there are some things that really hit home. You're talking about this certain demonic entity. I know it's the devil the work of the devil to keep somebody from their calling, keep them isolated, depressed, cycles of they, they can't think clearly, they can't, something happened to them that caused some damage and the enemy was trying to keep them from their things. So I don't really care what you call it, what its name is. I don't care what its name is. You just have to break it and break the darn thing and break the devil and let him know that the blood of Jesus is over you <laughs> yeah, tries to strangle your message. That's right, Dr. J, try to strangle everything. Your clarity, you know, your direction, your movements, your self-image, your, it just does all of that because of things that happen to you. So I want to I take a minute to pray right now. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, that you're causing all of our friends around the world to be absolutely delivered completely right now in the name of Jesus from all of these oppressions of the devil that has kept them from fulfilling their full flow calling. Yeah, that's right. Their full flow calling. And all this opposition that things that people want to fight, the things that are good, the things that you need. I mean, I, I mean one of the stupidest things ever is to have somebody that says they're a born-again believer and they want to fight. <laughs> they want to fight. Uh, uh, hello, Glenda. Hello, Greg Rayleigh. God bless you, man. Love you, man. Long time since we talked. I see you online, too. A lot. Woman of God, Glenda. Blessing, blessings on you, dear. I guess you're in Africa now or New York. Well, one of the two. The Lord is... Uh, is really tired of seeing people stifled and stuck. So I just break that thing right now off of you. Be free in Jesus' name. There it is. The power of the Holy Ghost. I decree from today, you will come back to your sensibilities, your right mind, your creative flow, the imagination, to be able to hear God and also feel good about yourself. My friend, Dr. Keith Johnson, has a great series of messages and he's taught it so many times, you, we, you couldn't get all the recordings if you tried. On the subject of confidence, it's out of this world. You need to get that any way you can. Uh, you know, get the resources from him, get it. Anything that'll boost your confidence. Of course, confidence comes from God. I'm not talking about in separation from God. And, 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 and again, back to the, the, in the title of this message about intimacy, Everything comes from your connection with God. It, it started there, and it's ending there. He's the author and finisher. He's the alpha and omega. He's the beginning and the end. Author, finisher. Alpha, omega. Beginning, end. You started from him. You're ending with him. Guess who's your father? Not just your earthly dad. Many people's earthly dad has gone on. My grandfather, I led him to the Lord. He's in heaven since 1990. My father, bless his darling memory, uh, great memory, powerful memory, powerful man. He uh, passed the birth of God bless you, dear, in South Africa. Love you. By a donkey. That means thank you in Afrikaans. When they first said that to me, I was in Pretoria, and the guy said, uh, buy a donkey. I said, how much is it? <laughs> buy a donkey. Buy it. You get it? That's a joke. Buy a donkey. Buy a donkey. Tim Cormier, I see your message there. Come on the broadcast. And I, I tell you, the day has to come to when I could get my studio more in motion with, the, or with these devices and click on some friends. We do the split screen and... We can be uh, having a dialogue to bless you of some great revelations and things that people have. Amen. God morning. Yes, so it's morning over there already. Oh, my. Well, it's early. 
early in the morning. Boy, you're up early. You're, you're, you're a real uh, Proverbs 31, 10 to 31 woman. Proverbs 10, excuse me, the verse 10 to 31. Proverbs 31, 10 to 31. The Lord is good. Buy a donkey, Brother Frank. I think it's, uh, it's like, it, 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 I don't know how to spell it in Afrikaans, but it means thank you in Afrikaans. It's like thank you. But it sounds like buy a donkey. You know, in Kenya, they have a lot of donkeys. There's a whole town called Mwea in Kenya. I was there and... Uh, I was there, and there's so many donkeys, I nearly flipped out. I was having the time of my life. When you drive, you have to be careful. you got to have a real groove on. You know, somebody said about the things they don't tell I just read an article. I'm going to post it. The things they don't tell you about the city of Nairobi or places like that. Red lights are only suggestions. You know, green and red lights, they're suggestions. You need to be careful because not every... There were times when people didn't have lights. It's a new thing just the last few years. After my prophecies over Kenya... They built the roads and put street lights, you know, light signals and all that. For lanes to cross, new superhighways were built. It was never there before. God used this man right here that's talking to you to prophesy over millions of people there and over the whole of societies, the whole of societies that in the infrastructure and the government and everything else, they build all this. So they said lights are still a suggestion there. But you go to a town called Mwea or Kikuyu, uh, Mwea has more donkeys, I think, than Kikuyu, but Kikuyu has a lot. you got to watch where you're going. Donkeys, don't, they don't know where they're going, man. They call them punda. It's, in Swahili, the word is punda. The pundas, they don't know where they're going. They just go when they want to go. So you gotta, you got to go, ooh. And it's, I was like, people, like, people look a little impatient, you know. I thought, I'll stop and turn and flow with them and get around them, not hit them. I'm a great driver. I could, I could drive a race car. I could drive anything. And I've been driving. I've been driving all over the world. I know how to drive. Uh, I could do 80 miles an hour in a narrow alley if I had to and not hit anything. I'm, I am a brilliant driver. If you're in the car with me, you're going to make it. You're safe. Nothing's going to happen. Adverse. It's going to be all good. And uh, all these donkeys, pundas. I was like, punda way way. You punda. <laughs> that's kind of a bad word to say to someone. You call them a donkey. That's a really like, uh, it's an insult. But the pundas, I say, hey, punda, what are you doing? And they just look, they just keep going, you know. So uh, there's no order to it, you know. But all of these, uh, all of these new things that are being developed, my God, in Africa, it's phenomenal. There's more than that. I could go on and on. I, I, God had me speak about the uh, East African countries coming together, becoming more unified, and President Uhuru Kenyatta, who I prophesied also would be the president twice. He's now this, in his second term. And I said it on national media and television across the whole country. Caused a lot of warfare, too, over all the elections. All the elections back to the year 2002, when the new government was made after a 24-year 24, 24 dictatorship. That collapse, I prophesied that, and then all these other things, all these elections, four more elections, and God had me predict and prophesy to the nation, to millions of people, which was, I found that was a bit dangerous. I found out later, I didn't know at the time. And uh, uh, said who was going to be the president, put them in office, and, you know, there we go. And I'm known for that. I'm, I'm a household name. We, over one of the prophecies... I think it was in 2007, we had 4 million hits on my website, on thomasmanton.com. thomasmanton.com is there. Uh, we're going to be adding a lot more things to it, but it's got some great things on there. You can go there. You can become a partner. You can sow seed. You can read a few things, see a few video clips. It's wonderful. And we had 4 million hits on that site, 4 million hits over one prophecy. Till today, I get calls from Kenya every day, all day, every day, all day, every day. It just keeps going and going and going. All right, you can share this too with your friends, and I'm, I'm loving this, the subject of intimacy. Intimacy is a foundation for your spiritual life. And I'm finding that the Holy Spirit really wants to bring a revival to individuals and to leaders and bring them back to a place of absolute covert covenant, if I could say that. I mean, private, 
intimate, one-on-one. -on -one. And then, you know, what you do in secret, you'll be rewarded openly. You know, what you pray through, God will then give you platforms and God will give you things. When you experience his favorable touch with you and him, he'll make the favor go outside of you and find you. And there's three realms of favor. There's, there's favor uh, upon you, there's favor to you, there's favor for you, and there's favor through you. The f four, four ways. The, the Lord will come upon you with his favor, meaning he's, he's smiling upon you. And then he'll bring favor to you He'll do things outside of yourself for you and he will then make you a favorable instrument for him and show his favor through you to others. And that, we, could, we, could, we could talk about that for a long time and not exhaust the power of that. God's favor. Where does it come from? You think it comes by accident? No. I was talking about the greats. Do you think Men that shook the world, ministries like A. A. Allen and William Branham and Kenneth Hagin and uh, uh, R. W. Schambach and you know all these guys that were great evangelists, okay, and 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 uh, prophetic also, and 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 John G. Lake, who, who had such power in the realm of healing that no disease could touch him. In fact, they tried to take an example of the bubonic plague, the Black Death, and they put it. The virus, they found, he found the scientific uh, people that were crazy enough to uh, listen to him, and they didn't want to. And they put it on his hand, and then they analyzed it again, and the, that disease was dead. That virus, or whatever that was, that was killing people. If it touched you, you might as well be dead. If it touched you, you're, you're cooked. You're done. And it died in his hand, because he said... I'm redeemed from the curse of the law. Christ has been made uh, 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 the propitiation, propitiation of, a, of a mediator for me. And, and this is it. And no disease. He died for it. He took 39 strides for my healing. And no disease can, can touch me. And God used him to bring like 100,000 miracles, documented miracles. I think it was just in South Africa. Then he was also in America. Miracles of healing like that. I mean, where people had terminal diseases, cripples, blind, deaf, just deadly terminal diseases. And when he prayed for them, they were healed. And that was the end of that. Do you, do you think that man didn't pray before that? Do you think he didn't cry to God before that? Do you think he didn't have that intimacy with the Lord? Yes, he did. There's nobody that's been great in God or in the kingdom. There's also, let, let's switch it over to the world's people or whatever's happening on the earth now. In the realm of business, there's no one that hasn't been diligent that didn't, you know, to extend a lot of energy and pain and suffering too. And all of that to get where they are. I was sharing a story about that yesterday. There was someone that's saying, you know, I work so hard to get all this and you see all that what I have. He's a multi, multi, very millionaire, very wealthy guy, very well-to-do guy, famous. He's on, on so many platforms. His name is out there in the world. He's famous. But he, I don't know if he wanted to be famous or he just wanted to work hard to be successful. And he also wants to help people, you know. He has a thing to help people and teach people. But, of course, it's good for him because that's part of his business. And uh, he said the times when I didn't want to do things, and I did it anyway, but and when nobody would have known me, but now look, so the scripture is clear. The diligent hand makes rich, but the slack hand makes the want. It's also true in the realm of spiritual intimacy. It's true in the realm of business. It's true in the realm of everything. When you're diligent, you're going to become prosperous in that area. The Bible talks also about tilling your, your land, working your fields. I'm talking to you here. Take this. You, you, you do it enough, you're going, to be, you're going to be blessed. And a giver will also be blessed. Proverbs 11.25 says that... Um, Proverbs 11.25 says that the generous one... This is one of the modern translations. I like this one a lot. Because the, the King James says, The liberal soul shall be made fat. 
Well, we don't like the word liberal these days too much, do we? And fat, nobody wants to be fat. We're trying to lose weight, bless God. So I don't know if I like that translation so much, although I understand what it means. But here's a modern English translation of, of Proverbs 11.25. The scripture says, A generous one will become a well-watered garden. The generous person will then themselves become a well-watered garden garden. It means you sow, then you reap back. You sow and then you reap. You give and then the harvest comes back to you. You work and then you succeed. The only place success comes before work is in the dictionary, S before W. But in the real world, it comes after diligence. D is way before. And then success is, well... But you got to go all the way to the end and work backwards. You go to work, W, and diligently, and then it brings you to success. So you, you, stop deluding yourself. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling this thing about intimacy with God. The ultimate connection that you can ever have is with the Holy Spirit. The number one priority you can have is to, is to have a realm of dominion and power with heaven. Isaiah 45, 11, I was praying that on the phone today. I was on an international call with one of my leaders overseas who serves, who serves in this ministry and the extremely faithful individual. And then uh, I, I could talk all day about them, but let me just make the point of what I said. I was in prayer. We were praying. I started to pray. And I cried out to God, Isaiah 45, 11. I said, Lord, I am demanding this. I am demanding this, according to Isaiah 45, 11. If you're going to talk in like uh, really strong, aggressive terms like that, you better have a chapter and verse to back it up. But the Lord said in Isaiah 45, 11, he said, uh, you can command the works of my hands. And Isaiah 45 is another, it's a great scripture. that talks about treasure and riches and wealth in verse 2 and 3 coming to you. And even hidden from hidden sources. Well, that comes because you have power with God. Deuteronomy 8.18, he says, I am the Lord your God that teaches you to get, uh, who, who uh, gives you power to get wealth. Isaiah 48.17 says, I teach you to profit and lead you in the way you should go. But Deuteronomy 8.18 says, I give you power to get wealth. It's the word power there is the same word we see in the book of Acts 1.8. It says, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You'll be witnesses for me through the whole world. And then also in Revelation 5, 12, Jesus was the lamb who was slain, uh, who, who was then to receive power and riches and glory and blessing and honor and might and glory. Those seven keywords. Another seven keywords is in Isaiah eleven two. 2. The scripture says... Uh, he, he'll give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, might, and the fear of the Lord. There's six, and the seventh is the Spirit of the Lord himself. He's the Spirit of the Lord who gives you wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, might, and the fear of the Lord. Those six upon the seventh, which is his own person. So we keep seeing these words, these power keywords. I did a whole uh, series on that. One of, I want to finish that book and get that out. It's powerful. The keywords. I mean, that's your lot in life as far as God's concerned. But how are you going to get all this? You're going to get it by your connection with him. You're going to get it by listening to a teacher. You're listening to me. You're going to get it by receiving understanding and wisdom from heaven and uh, the teaching and instruction and impartation of knowledge. But you got to have that intimate connection with God yourself. And I feel like a clarion call from heaven, a musical trumpeting, glorious, melodious, fierce, like a sword of fire in the sound of the, the sound of the voice of the Lord to tell the earth and people all over the world it's time to get intimate with him again. It's time to repent of anything that made you miss God's will. It's time to let his conviction show you all the areas about you that he wants to fix. It's time for you to prepare for your next season to build a foundation and the platform of what God wants. 
It's time for you to get busy about that in Jesus' name. I feel there's a very heavy glory. I have not really heard anybody teach on this or speak like this, so I know I'm unique, but I'm, I've been with God. I've been with God. Know that. I've been in prayer. Know that. I've been walking with God a very long time. Know that. And this power is coming across to you. It's time for you to be raised up. If your pastor doesn't talk like me, I don't, that doesn't bother me at all. Don't let it bother you. Because your pastor's a different cat than I am. He's a different kind of person. We all have our places in, 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 in the kingdom. But uh, I'll never tone down or apologize for the power and the glory and the depths of revelation and wisdom and knowledge and understanding that flows through me. Because this is the purpose of God, why he's put his hand on my life. If it's that strong and that glorious and you're like, whoa, hey, oh, I've not heard that. Good. Um, it's a compliment to me. Because you, you, you're hearing it now and the Lord's giving it to be spoken. Someone had a vision again. They were praying, one of my intercessors, and they were talking about, they saw the Manton Library. And I said, wow. And then they wrote after that, it's in heaven. It's coming to the earth. All the things you're to write and to download and to bring to the earth by revelation. And they don't know. They don't know anything. This very special person on my team, one of my great intercessors and uh, administrative people, they, they don't know that years ago I had that vision. And the Lord showed me the books. I saw piles of books that were to be written. I'll share that in another time, but I just want to allude to it right now. But uh, the purpose of God is vast. And he's not changing his mind about what he's called you to do, my friend. He is not changing his mind. He's not going to take back uh, the assignment he's given for you to perform that needs to be fulfilled. So your assignment now is to get close to him, connected with him. I'm praying that the visitation of God, special personal visitations, new epiphanies, new appearances of the Lord, come to you to show you everything about yourself and about your calling and about what you need to do and what you need to sort out, what you need to prepare for, what you need to be diligent in, where you need to be. All of those things about placement and position and purpose, whew, this is powerful. God is going to do that now. I'm prophesying it right now. I'm praying all these P words, position, purpose, power, passion, pursuit. And more. Perseverance is part of it. Oh, yes. You got to press through and get through where the things that are going on right now. Whatever adversities you're having, you got to get through them. You have to believe God. He'll give the answer. But you got to pray and you have to make some decisions that you're going to get some things sorted out. And you have to make the decisions based on your calling to be precise. There's another P word. Precise, precision in what you're supposed to be doing. And prayer and prophecy and proclamation. Three more P words. I, <laughs> it's going to be in my book down this. I am doing that over you right now and over your life. That the Lord himself is coming to lift you. Sift you, fix you, make you, break you, whatever it takes. Put you back together, fix everything up. Mix it all together and just make you the absolute glorious, unique anointed vessel of his to shake this world and make the world a better place to be because you were there in this world to do things for him and to advance his kingdom around the world. Wow. I'm Thomas Manton IV. Thank you for being my partner. I'll continue in this. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you, my friend. Let his presence breathe upon you right now. Ruach HaKodesh, the Spirit of the Lord, the breath of God, that life that has its own way of expressing itself in Himself. Let the Holy Spirit come upon you. Those of you that are just coming on, God bless you. I see you there. Rick, God bless you for that, for writing. Thank you. Let me know where you're from. Where you? Everybody that's on, please, can you... I, I, sometimes I forget to do this. 
I, I gotta remember to do this more. Uh, please write where you're where you're watching from. Write me a comment. You know, the Lord spoke to me and said, every person that will write me and communicate, there's a blessing that will come upon them. So you do that. Take time to write a note. Just say hi. Praise the Lord. Watching from wherever you're watching from. And then if you want to write me anything personal or you have something you'd like to give to the ministry or do something for the ministry or you want special prayer for you, you can private inbox me. You can direct message me here on the social media and I will get it. And also please do uh, fill out the form on, on my website. Go to my website on thomasmanton.com and there's a box there. You can put in your email, your phone number, and your name and a, a comment, a prayer request, or whatever. I'll get it and be able to communicate back with you. I don't think I've announced that before very much, but I need to all the time. Somebody keep reminding me or someone could, maybe Brother Frank, you could write a message on that. Uh, uh, fill out the form however you want to say and communicate on thomasmanton.com Hi Carla Ivana from Portugal God bless you are you in Lisbon? you know I saw the biggest waves in the world on the north coast I think they're like go to 100 feet high you'd have to be almost out of your mind to get in that water with that kind of power like a wall of water and if you misstep you might be your last uh, few minutes on the earth You see these guys surfing a wave that goes to 90 and 100 feet high. The power of that water. But Psalm 29 says, The voice of the Lord is more powerful than any waters, even the entire oceans themselves. So we need to be in connection with Him. As you're sowing a seed, and I want to ask all my partners to please do that. Hello, dears that are coming on. God bless you. Uh, 40 diamond keys um, for your success. This book I wrote on the benefits of excellence, okay? And also I want to include, if you're writing me from the North American continent, I can send to you as you're sowing a seed, a substantial seed online. On thomasmanton.com, you could also use Cash App. People in Kenya, you can do M-Pesa. And I'll take note of your M-Pesa, and I'll see you later. I'll find a way to get the book to you. Don't worry. I can't really mail it. Nazare. Okay, yes, the wave up there. Yes, dear. Praise God. Are you in Lisbon, Portugal? You can tell me. And uh, I'll find a way to get these to you at some point. I'll, I'll have the record of your seed, and don't worry, we'll find you, and you'll be able to get a copy of this too. Uh, when we reprint for Africa, we're going to do that. And I have about five or six new books that have been om- o- are almost to completion, and I need to do the. I need to do the. Jeffrey, thank you. As you're a partner and you're sewing, you'll be able to get a hold of this. In Jesus' name, I'm so grateful for your help in our world's missions. You know, we're doing a lot around the world internationally, and it's so it's a wonderful thing. So, uh, I. Uh, I uh, am finishing about five or six books that have come out of the shoot of my production process and I need to final edit them, do the final run to get them out. Very powerful, powerful books on focus, on relationships, on the will of God, the call of God. I mean, so much, so much, so much, so much on success and other things. And uh, wow, I'm telling you, I'm feeling a little bit Feeling a little bit high under the anointing here. This is powerful. I'm feeling it. Father, thank you for your grace and your touch. (sighs) Again, breathe a fresh wind of fire and your presence upon my friend and partner and friend watching from Pennsylvania, Rick. God bless you. Thank you for that. The Lord bless you for writing. Anybody that's writing, I tell you, the Lord spoke to me. He told me. People that communicate, you know, out of, what is the old saying? Out of, out of sight, out of mind. When I see you there, I'll remember you. It makes a, a, an image, I'll remember you and I'll be praying for you. You see how that works? Instead of just people like passing in the night and you never knew they were there and just dive into it. Ask God for the impartation of the touch of heaven. Like that's upon our ministry. Come upon you. And uh, the Lord spoke to me also and said, you know, 
So many people are doing so many things in these days. A lot of preachers, a lot of people want to preach, a lot of people coming on, a lot of people doing stuff. And um, yes, dear, I get you. 20 minutes away from Lisbon, yeah. The, the Lord is, uh, uh, is having us all to build, you know, according to our assignment. And there are people, our audiences are there. The receivers are there. Our tribe is there. You know, our proteges and mentees are there. Our, our brothers and sisters were of power. Fellow apostles and prophets and pastors and evangelists and teachers and, and other people in administrations and governments and the ministry of helps and all that. They're there. God carves out when he makes a ministry and he makes a man and he makes a ministry. He causes people to connect and that's where we need to be. If you look at anybody that's doing anything substantial... They are very busy and very in the thing that they're doing. So we all have to look up and say, God, hey, what do you want me to be doing? Here's another thing. When God calls a man as a number one, he also has a number two, three, and four to serve and work in the thing. Because no man has a ministry by himself. There are people that the will of God for them is to connect under this grace and to work with us and for us and, and with us in the ministry to touch the world. Not everybody has to be the light bearer, the, the one with the light beam thing on the, in the front with the microphone, you know? How could, how could it be? Could you have 20 leaders of a ministry and they all got a mic in their hand? Picture that, how perverse that is. 20, they all have, each one has a microphone and they all want to be the first guy to speak and then, you know, you have chaos. Anything with many heads is a, is, is a monster. You can't, so God does call people to also work in the thing. And the Lord's bringing our team to us, people that are just called of God. They said, you know, when I met you, I, I, I got connected and got to have, you know, a word with you, a time with you, I, or, or, or your, pr your prayer and prophecy. I never felt anything like it. It unlocked something in me. I couldn't connect much with so many other people. But you, it's like you're carrying something from heaven. That is so needed, and they're already activated and they're working in this thing. It is awesome in the in our ministry. So, uh, and there are people that you have your own work. I mean, I'm called to prophesy to you and teach you and release things to you and take the, what I'm saying and use it. Go preach it. Go share it. Make it become revelation to you by sharing it with others. That's fine. I love that. I love that. You know. That's what we're doing this for. I want to see you blessed. I want to see you raised. I want to see you lifted. I want to see you filled with the Spirit of God. I want to see you overflowing and saturated with the power and presence of the Holy Ghost. And have your intimate thing with Him going on strong. That's what needs to happen. My friend, I love you. Thank you for being my partner on thomasmanton.com. There are other ways also to sow and to write me and connect. I'm looking forward to hearing from you, and I'm praying for you. And as I see you, I'll be praying for you. Don't forget to ask for the book, The Benefits of Excellence, and also a great message I taught in, on a DVD here in a, in a great conference, uh, in a great conference that, I, uh, that I was in, uh, uh, thousands of people there. And on the power to create wealth. Ooh, this is deep. I mean, the, the content of material that's in this book and what's on this DVD, you haven't heard it anywhere. It's rich. And for a love gift, you can have it as your own. Father, thank you for your touch upon my precious friend and partner right now as they're receiving from this grace of yours. And I thank you for the new season that's beginning for them now and the outpouring of heaven upon their life as they connect intimately with you, as they approach you and take time to pray, time to worship, not just in church or in meetings, but privately, personally. And, and they, that when, they, when they allow you to speak to them exactly what it is you want to be done that comes from intimacy, and what will be born out of that, you and God together, will become a phenomenon in the world and in the earth. It's that powerful. The Lord bless you. I love you.
Thank you for joining me. I'll be coming to you with more of this on the next broadcast. The Lord bless you. Share this with everybody. People need to know these things. And thank you, Lord, for a fresh visitation from heaven upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. Love you and talk to you again real soon. Amen.